Yes, welcome back to the Sports Show. We're going to talk about swimming, of course, your great love, Brit. So we thought, let's start at the top of the tree. So we've got the chairman of SA Swimming, Peter James, joins us. Pete, thanks for your time. Thank you. Hey, I don't want to ask you this. 40 years in the industry of swimming, 16 on the board, we were just saying before, six probably sitting in the seat as chairman. What's been the biggest change you've seen over the journey? I, look, I, I think like all sport, it just continues to evolve, uh, particularly as, uh, I guess, the scientific side of things come into play. They start to uh, look at athletes in terms of training regimes, uh, food that they eat, uh, sleep routine. So, you know, athletes have just continued to uh, develop and uh, I think that's across all sports and it certainly has been so uh, in swimming. Plus the fact that uh, Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, uh, the swimmers usually bring home the, the larger slices of the bacon and there's generally a spin-off from that where uh, people get interested. There's, uh, at the moment, we are post-Olympics having a surge with people interested in the sport. Yeah, and talking about 40 years of involvement in the sport, um, I'd like to know a little bit about your progression into your position as chair. Were you once a swimmer yourself? Uh, I do the comedy, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, look, I really got involved in this respect uh, when my children, uh, two daughters, got involved in swimming. Uh, they were going along uh, quite well. And like all parents that uh, get involved with their children, of course, uh, I was asked to assist in various capacities, keeping time, uh, starting, uh, and various other officiating capacities. Well, in time, uh, my daughters moved on, but uh, mum and dad stayed in the sport. Mate, did you have a favourite stroke was for you? Is there a favourite event of the Olympics you like? You know, everyone has, and I know it's hard as the chairman to, to say one because you'll be pillared for it, but, you know, we all have one that we like. Obviously, for mine, it's Kyle Chalmers in the 100 metres, but there was a time where it was Kieran Perkins in the 1500. So do, do you find that you're gravitated to buy who's swimming really well to kind of get you into that? Phil, I, I'm going to answer your question, and as soon as I walk out of the studio, you'll I'll be saying, why didn't I tell him about that one? Uh, look, I... I think the 1500 metre swim, uh, if it's close, is absolutely fantastic. And I've got to say that uh, I'm often asked, what's the best swim I've ever seen? Uh, and I remember Kieran Perkins breaking the world record just ahead of the 1994 Commonwealth Games in the Canberra pool. Yep. And uh, he didn't break it, he absolutely smashed it. And uh, he was negative splitting. Uh, the hundreds, the further he went into the race. And uh, I guess what made it uh, memorable for me was there were two very important people watching. Uh, one was Paul Keating, the Prime Minister of the day, and I realised that night why they called him the Undertaker. <laughs> and the other was Rods Kelly, who was the Sports Minister. Minister. Yep. And I've got to say that she was doing backflips on an office chair as Kieran was going through demolishing this record. So in that sense, uh, 1500 is uh, plenty of excitement. You've either got the battle between the individuals or you've got someone that's right on the money with the, uh, the world record. I think it just shows the passion that, yeah, the sport of swimming can bring up in someone. Um, last week we spoke to an ice hockey player and he was explaining how they actually haven't had two seasons um, because of COVID. And I'd just like to know, and I know because I'm a swimmer myself or an ex-swimmer, um, you guys have been able to put on some really good events even through COVID, um, despite restrictions, um, Olympic trials as well, SA hosted. So tell us a little bit about those challenges that you faced as an organisation to make that and get that going for the swimmers. I, look, I've got to say from the outset that swimming were no orphans in this. Mm. I think all sports across the board uh, had to deal with the, the COVID situation and it was a case of managing it. It was a case of liaison with the relevant uh, authorities, particularly health, and coming up with and devising a plan uh, where we could uh, honour those matters that we had to in terms of uh, minimising the potential spread of COVID. Uh, so we uh, sat down with SA Health and of course the pool management at Marion and uh, a plan was negotiated. Uh, we followed that religiously 
uh, it must have been good because we held the Olympic trials here. And uh, as a result of that, I'm pretty confident we'll be getting uh, more national events very, very soon. Hey, Pete, you make that sound really simple. It's like, oh, we just made a, had a quick meeting, a couple of phone calls, <laughs> and then away we went. H how long was the process, you reckon, from start to we're all good to go for the Olympic trials? How long's a piece of string, Phil? Was it, uh, was it years? Is it months? Is it, you know, because people turn up to the events. So I turn up to the swimming trials and I walk away and go, these were fantastic. But behind the scenes, we know that's months and months, sometimes years to get it to that point. And then COVID jumps in as well. Yeah, uh, and I, I hear what you're saying. I, I guess because we are regularly conducting meets, there's a, a base yep. plan uh, on the deck. But COVID meant that we had to uh, tweak it. And I was saying before, uh, the fact that uh, swimmers would march on the marshal room uh, when they're called, make their way across the starting platforms, uh, that was all off. We had to have a plan where they walked in that direction and that direction and they couldn't come back that way. So yes, it, it was difficult and uh, uh, there were quite a few weeks put into making sure that this is the way it'll go. You mentioned, as we were talking off air before uh, last weekend, you had a swim meet and there were 700 swimmers that turned up. It went from 8 a.m. in the morning till way past 6 p.m. Yes, Four it did. swimmers. My uh, mum would have been complaining if she was yeah, up that in was the our first, uh, That was our first long course meet for the season. Uh, we call it an all-in meet. And uh, when it was originally planned, we thought it would be two sessions. We had 700 entries, a little bit over 700, wow. and it ended up being three sessions. So you can imagine we were there from eight in the morning until eight at night. Uh, the juniors in the early session, and then through to the senior swimmers. So uh, when that happens, you think, we must be doing something right here. There's uh, very strong enthuse enthusiasm from across all of our clubs. I think uh, we now have uh, 44 affiliated clubs in South Australia. Wow. So uh, we're going very well. That's right around the state. Wow. And I can tell you the, uh, the country teams are very, very keen and enthusiastic about swimming competition. Hey, Pete, you touched on it at the start. The Olympics come and then there's always a flow-on effect after the Olympics, and obviously with swimming, because you guys do. You set the, the moment for us through the games. The swimmers start, they win the gold, that gets the rest of the sports going. Is there a big flow on after the Olympic Games for swimming in South Australia? Certainly in my experience, Phil. Uh, and I, I guess the more glamorous the Games in, in the sense of, you know, we win medals, uh, we've got people on the victory dais. I, I think that breeds enthusiasm in the general community. And not only swimming, whatever, whatever sport it is, uh, people love to see Aussies do well. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, the big talk, of course, be it AFL, be it swimming, be it basketball, whatever, is double vax to compete. Is that a concern for swimming as well? Is that something they have to get their eyes across? I, it, it's not something that we've really wrestled with at the moment. Uh, it hasn't become an issue in as much that uh, someone has said, you know, I, I don't want to be vaxxed. Bearing in mind, a lot of our athletes are at the junior level. Uh, so they're probably not involved yet in the vaccination. Uh, it's not something that we've bumped into yet, uh, but if and when, we'll have to deal with it. And we would be taking our guide from uh, Swimming Australia. Yeah, it's an interesting time with swimming, mate. We know FINA have got their hands full at the moment. They're making some changes. I'll keep you away from the controversy. <laughs> but you, you touched on it. There's kind of a template with all sports on how things roll out. What do you reckon the biggest challenge coming up the next... 12 months will be for swimming, SA? Well, I, I guess it's going to depend a lot on what's happening in the community. Uh, is the spread going to uh, ease right off or, or will we get, as some people are predicting, uh, a surge in cases? So it'll, it'll depend very much, but uh, I'm just hoping it'll back off slowly and some of the uh, conditions that we have now. For example, uh, people sitting in the grandstand had to wear a mask. Uh, how long will that go on for? I'm not sure. Yeah, all right, Peter James, the chairman of Swimming SA, we are in great hands if they're all listening to you, Pete, no doubt about it. Stay with us still, plenty to come on the show.